to 14 days with Threadripper. It's been a great couple of weeks, and the headline for this review is this is an absolutely superb CPU. It whizzes through everything I can throw at it, including content creation and gaming. And if I'm honest with you, some of the things that I was worried about having slightly degraded performance over my 6900K just haven't been true. So gaming is absolutely fine. There is a feature in some software that uh, basically disabled some of the cores. It's a thing called the Ryzen Master Software, and it disables half of the cores because the Infinity fabric that stitches the two dies together introduces some latency. I'll be honest with you guys, I couldn't find any difference really with that feature enabled or switched off, so I've just left it off. It's one more step to have to go through, and when you disable those cores, it does require a reboot, so I just haven't bothered. From an overclocking perspective, I have been really pleased with the performance of Threadripper. Now, given it's early days and these are early BIOSes and they're definitely not without their bugs, guys, and we'll come to that in a second, the overclocking performance was truly phenomenal. I got myself to four gigahertz. I kid you not, guys, it must have been about four minutes. I mean, yes, to be fair, I've got a 1700 Ryzen and I have got some experience uh, overclocking on this architecture, but I was absolutely stumped at how quick it was to get that chip up to four gigahertz. You remember on the 1700, we got to 3.9 and that thing was not budging at all. A really relatively straightforward clock, uh, overclock on the Threadripper 1950X, straight to four gigahertz. I think there's plenty of headroom left on that CPU. Uh, and the thing that's kind of throwing me off here, guys, if I'm honest with you, is the stated uh, upper thermal threshold for the CPU on the AMD website. Now they say that its maximum uh, its max maximum temperature is 68 degrees. This thing's easily hitting 71, 72, and that's underwater. Having gone through a whole load of reviews and YouTube videos, I can see there are a plethora of people that have been running these things quite contently at 81, 82. There's definitely uh, a difference between what you're reporting on the package and what you're reporting on the die. There's a 27 degrees variance between those two, but that still doesn't really explain quite what AMD are saying on their website and rather helpfully it just says 28 degrees and nothing else at all so your guess is as good as mine. I have had some challenges with memory. I've got a Corsair RGB memory that is rated up to 3000 megahertz. I cannot for love nor money get this thing above 2800. It doesn't matter what I put the sock voltage to or the dims themselves. I had the sock up at 1.3, which is the absolute maximum rated for uh, passive airflow going through the case. If I'm honest with you guys, I don't really feel like I should have to put the sock voltage up to 1.3. It's a stated and rated speed for the RAM and it should pretty much happen at the stock sock voltage. I had the dims up to uh, 1.36 when they're rated for 1.35 and it actually didn't matter what I did disabling C states and and, 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 and. no matter what I did I could not get that RAM above 2800. A whole uh, heap of forums reporting exactly the same problem and this is exactly what we saw with Ryzen so a couple of BIOS updates I'm sure this will get better I'm actually running a beta BIOS on this particular board so it's the uh, this is the Asus Zenith Extreme running uh, 0801 uh, which is in beta 0701 being the latest version I definitely found a substantial difference between 0701 and 0801 so if you're on this board I recommend giving it a go if you see some odd things starting to happen that you haven't had uh, problems with an 0701 by all means roll back but personally for me the beta the beta bios was substantially better content creation is good in the main i've got some kind of peculiar behavior going on at the moment that the cpu won't quite peak out uh, at 100 percent load i'm getting anywhere uh, anything anywhere between kind of 50 percent up to 80 percent with some real deep dips down to kind of 35%, 24% utilization, which I really can't explain. So here's an earlier video. It was my review of the TP-Link 
fabulous little mesh network. And this is a good use case actually because it's a relatively complex timeline. There's lots of different video clips in here. There's color correction, music, there's audio files. I believe there's some transitions as well from a fade in fade out perspective. And if you just have a look there, then you can see CPU is idling. And then also we're just keeping an eye here, just on the GPU load. If we get this rendering out. that intermediate encoder which normally does a slightly better job of utilizing system resources and kick that off so now that that's rendering this is under a a 1T command rate, which in theory should be fast, you can see quite quickly that's really not making the most of Threadripper at all. I mean, that peaked out at 61% utilization there, but generally it's wobbling anywhere between kind of 35, 40, and 50%. And looking over here on GPU load, that's really only sitting, I mean, that's at 0% now, and that kind of wobbles up to about 30%. So we're not making best use of the system resources. And to my earlier point, if you look down through all of the cores and threads, they're all being used. All 32 threads are being used there, but they're all just sitting at 50%. I don't personally think that that's got anything to do with the platform and probably is more to do with the Adobe software itself. I've played around with the hard drives, trying to get um, scratch disks and uh, you know the media in different locations to see if there was a bottleneck on the hard disk drive. I would have been surprised. I've got NVMe SSDs in this. No matter what I did, I typically got the same kind of performance. I did tweak around quite a lot in the BIOS and I did have it holding pretty steady 80% at one point, but I can't seem to replicate that. So again, same challenge, I think a couple of BIOS updates and all of these problems will be ironed out. Players Unknown Battleground was slick and easy to use. Uh, again, as I, uh, as I mentioned earlier, absolutely no difference whatsoever between the gaming mode and the overclock mode, but bearing in mind I have got the entire chip overclocked to four gigahertz. That's all 16 cores, that's all 32 threads. So in the main, it's been kind of what I was expecting. It's a little bit like Ryzen was when it came out. It's a little bit flaky in some areas, but you know, guys, to be fair, that's no different to many of what I'm, uh, many of the comments that I'm reading on forums about the new Intel lineup. And this still constitutes phenomenal value for money. In Cinebench, I'm turning out in excess of 33,000, which is double what my 6900K was doing at stock. More than double, in fact, what my 6900K was doing at stock. That was doing 14 something. So AMD, I take my hat off to you. You've really thrown the gauntlet down. It's great to see fantastic competition in the CPU market. Intel, the hell are you doing? Lower your prices for God's sake. Thanks so much for watching guys. I hope you're really well wherever in the world you are. Please like and share this video. Subscribe if you're not and I'll see you in my next one.